Hello everybody, my name is Carol. Welcome to my sewing room for Hashtag Friday Sews, where I'm gonna talk about this lovely green cardigan that I made this week. And it's just the softest thing. Friday Sews, of course, was started by the lovely Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room. As we say every week, but just in case you've never come across Hashtag Friday Sews before, it's when we put a video out on a weekend or a Friday talking about what we've been sewing, what we'd like to sew, anything we've been buying, and it's a general catch up and chat maybe just a tiny little about our lives as well. Great fun, been doing it for a while, absolutely love it. So the first thing I've got to talk about, which I made this week, if you saw a fabric haul that I put out, I think was on Sunday, from the fabric that I recently bought back from my trip to America, this was one of the pieces in it. Now I got this from Hobby Lobby, I think. The minute I saw this fabric, I knew I wanted to make a quick sew cardigan from it. And that's the one I always make, the 3693. Um, this cardigan, this version here, not the kind of zipless hoodie version. Um, it's a quick and simple make, always comes out well. I recently did one in another fabric and I've got a pink bit of fabric that I want to make one with as well. It, it came out beautifully. It's, uh, I think I showed, but it's got like a checkered pattern. And once again, I managed to get the thread just right because you can't see the stitching here. I'm gonna take it off and show you a bit closer because I'm really pleased with something. So it's all in one, so you've just got the sleeves, the front and the fronts and the back and the facing just folds in on itself and you get this really neat kind of thing on the inside. Now all I did to neaten this inside, if you can see that, was just do a line of zigzag, manage to place it just right. So in the green, so you can just see it, but honestly it's, it's wonderful and I'm thought I'd wear some green to uh, to wear it with but I'll put the footage in as I do normally really pleased with this <laughs> the funny thing is I have made this pattern I think about four or five times recently I've scaled down I used to make a small and now make an extra small because it's really oversized but for the first time for some reason I looked at the pattern and saw that I was meant to be using a six millimeter seam allowance. Now that's quite unusual for quick sew because they're normally uh, like the others with 1.5. So every other cardigan I have made, I've used a 1.5 seam allowance. This one I didn't, I used a six millimeter. I don't know if you can see in the footage, but the, the sleeve just slightly too big on me. So maybe I needed it, <laughs> the normal seam allowance on the sleeve but I thought it was crazy. I will know for next time, definitely. So that was just oh, one of my favorite makes. So I'm gonna put it away now and I will talk to you about the second makes. And this was also from the fabric that I bought and it was some pop jersey. Now, I was a bit naughty actually because when I announced pop jersey, I'm assuming that everybody knows what it is. Certainly if you live in the UK or haven't been to a Joanne's, you probably wouldn't know. So it was almost like I was using management speak, which I accuse my husband of all the time, um, talking about this pop fabric. But it is, as I understand it, it's a line of cotton jersey in Joanne's, um, well, suitable for children is what they put, um, but it's got lots of prints. It's. I have said about it before, um, it hasn't got great recovery, it's super soft, brilliant for children and for nightwear. So I made a pair of pyjamas. Now I'm not going to model pyjamas for you, but I would just say, so I have the top and it's a pattern I've used before, well two patterns I always use. So I've just got a normal t-shirt and for the t-shirt I used McCall's 7515. I do this crop t-shirt, it's very kind of oversized, loose, it's, it's really nice actually. I do lengthen the front a little bit just because it does come up a bit high. For the bottoms I use something different, I don't use this pattern. So it takes a lot more fabric that one. 
but yeah so that is the t-shirt part shorts now I know a lot of you accuse me of making uh, pyjamas all the time but I like different pyjamas for different seasons so obviously I've got loads of long leg ones um, I've got lots of short ones but I've only got a couple of mid-length ones so I made myself a uh, pair of mid-length ones cropped ones um, and I've just noticed I've got one of my uh, dots saying uh, front and back this time I labeled the front and back Obviously, I know the right side and the wrong side. But yeah, I use those sticky dots all the time just to label bits of fabric so I know what I'm working with. But yeah, really pleased with these. And the pattern I used was New Look 6859. And I do the crop version, but I never bothered to curve up the hem. Being really lazy, nah, his pyjamas, nobody sees them. So um, yeah. Honestly, they're so soft. I'm really pleased with those and I just love, they're just so bright and spring-like. So that will take me through to when it ever gets a bit warmer in the UK that I can wear my shorts sets. In case you're wondering, and it's really not exciting at all, but what I'm wearing today is a very tight now. I have to say, I was a little bit smaller when I uh, made this, but it's um, just a normal t-shirt from New Look 6246. I have made the trousers as well without the tags on the bottom but it is a good pattern. I don't think you can still get hold of this but I used to make those a lot but yeah this one's a bit tight on me but it's kind of spring looking so I was going with the whole theme this week. I was looking through uh, my fabric stash now I have my fabrics are kind of in one of these wardrobes hung up but then further along a bit in the cupboard I've got some children's fabrics and I was feeling a bit guilty because I have got a lot of children's fabrics that I've bought with the intention of making things and never get around to it so I thought this week I'm going to tackle two pieces of that fabric and one of them these will be for my grandsons one of them was this uh, dragon fabric which I can't remember where I got it from but it might be Eco B in um, Ireland and this one this one's got a bit of a story behind it but it's Lightning McQueen so I thought I'm gonna make a couple of t-shirts now the reason I made this this is a bit grim and if you're eating <laughs> I apologize I've got a bit of a warning but my little grandson, he's three, he absolutely loves Lightning McQueen. This is a bit of a plea actually, if anybody knows of anything. But he had this little fleece jacket, Lightning McQueen fleece jacket. So it's Disney Pixar cars. We found it in a charity shop and he loved this thing. He wore it all the time. He wore it on the plane over to our recent trip to Florida. And unfortunately, and this is where the warning comes in. The turbulence on the plane was really, really bad. Quite a lot of people were being ill. My daughter was taking him to the bathroom and she looked at him and he was green. And then we all know what happened. He was sick everywhere, all over my daughter and all over himself and this jacket. So what can you do? I mean, luckily <laughs> we were on the flight the next day. We weren't on that flight. But she just kind of bundled all the clothes up, put them in it's kind of a pillowcase and that, fortunately with all the, the drama, she left it on the plane. So it's never been tracked down, not that I imagine we'd want it back now. But yeah, I have tried to find some jacket similar to this and I'm going to put a picture of him in it. The only one, um, I can Google trace it online but it's in Poland. I think and they've sold out so it's on a website there so where this jacket came from I don't know now you'd have thought that while we're in Disney we would have been able to find some kind of Disney cars top and we couldn't so I think I can kind of get hold of one um, through Amazon there is one on there but for the meantime or I'm going to try and recreate it because I've got a photo of that little jacket I might try and recreate it with some kind of badges or use my embroidery machine Anyway, cut a long story short, I had some Lightning McQueen jersey in the cupboard, not doing anything, so I have made him a t-shirt and I'm hoping that keeps him happy just for a little while. It's not a jacket, but it's a super little t-shirt. So, hope you didn't mind me telling you that whole long story. 
The pattern. Now, the lovely Tiffany from Who's Your Handmade uses peekaboo patterns a lot for her lovely little daughter. So I thought, I'm a bit fed up with the big four children's patterns being so oversized. And what I do find is the necks uh, turn out kind of quite wide and quite low, not like a t-shirt that they would buy. So I thought I'd have a go at um, that pattern. And it was a PDF, but that's fine. I printed it off. off. So I've made these t-shirts for them. Now I haven't finished them because I have to show you how long these are. Now they are long in the pictures. So this will be the three-year-old, which isn't too bad, but it's this one for the seven-year-old. I'll put a picture in, but I held it up against me and it's almost where I would do a t-shirt. So I'm waiting for instruction from my daughter to see how long she wants them. Then I will chop them off and give them to the boys because it's been a long time since Nanny's made them something and I can't wait for him to see this. Friday sews group. We are such a community and I have to say I picked up this magazine last week and look who's in there. Now I know a lot of people talked about it last week but honestly aren't we so proud of our lovely Adam. Um, it's a brilliant article. I was so thrilled. Look how smart he looks in that, that jacket he made. Oh. Adam you're awesome. I'm so pleased for you. In that magazine there was some patterns and one of them really took my eye. <laughs> it's a t-shirt, I don't know why I said that, but it was a Brittany tee. <clears throat> so I thought oh that looks a nice tee especially if you had some striped fabric which I have got. So I thought oh that'd be a nice quick make. I'll open it up. Looked on the back of the pattern and it said pattern sheets included. Tracing required? Really? So they they printed it on not quite enough paper. So there's some overlapping. I'm sorry, I I was not impressed with that at all. So I haven't done it yet. I probably will do it. But if you're going to put a pattern sheet in, do it that you don't have to trace. I mean, maybe I'm being lazy, but that that kind of really shocked me. So there was a couple of other patterns, but um, if you want a review of this uh, magazine. Claire, the lovely Claire from Stitch Hem So did it last week actually. She went through it quite thoroughly and all the articles that are in there. I used to get another sewing magazine. Um, it's now stopped so there aren't many out there. So it was fun to pick up one and of course Adam was in it. This weekend we're going to be away down in our holiday home. We haven't been there since uh, we went away so we're going to go and check on it because there had been a couple of storms in the UK while we were away but I want to take some projects with me. I've now got my sewing machine down there. So a couple of things I wanted to get around to making this week, I haven't, and there are some more spring trousers. I really want to make another a pair of these. It's funny that all my new patterns are new look this week, and all I've seen this week are new look or pattern hauls because everybody's been grabbing these 99 cents patterns from Hobby Lobby and here I am pulling up loads of <laughs> new look patterns. I do have I think probably most of them um, so I haven't I don't feel I've missed out on this sale because I do have them anyway. Going back to this I want to make this uh, pattern again new look 6660. I made this in a very lightweight kind of denim, darker denim, it was almost a linen, but I really loved it and I wear them all the time, just that sort of roomier flared, it's not very flared but it's a nice shape. So I may, this may be a disaster but I have got some denim here, some lighter weight denim in obviously a, a lighter colour. I'm hoping that will work for kind of a lighter pair of jeans. So that's one thing I want to take with me and also I want to make out of this lovely linen fabric which Trish from Pinky's Farm has got as well and she's made a lovely pair of trousers. Um, I want to use <laughs> another new look, new look 6517 and this, I make this crop version, I do make it a bit less flared than that um, but I love this pattern. So very quick and easy, nice sort of uh, trouser pattern. So I'm hoping to make those as well. 
So what I'm going to have to do, obviously I don't want to take my overlocker down with me. So I think for the first time, I don't often do this, I'm going to cut the pieces out and I'm going to overlock them straight away. So I can just get cracking and hopefully make them when I'm down there. Now the only downside to this is that I'm a notch cutter. I like my little triangles. So obviously if I overlock everything, I've lost them straight away. So I'm going to have to, I'll probably mark them with tailor tacks. So I uh, don't lose the markings altogether but that is my intention now whether this happens or not I don't know we're going down this weekend as I said but we are having the grandsons to stay for a day and a night so uh, they do go to bed normally about half past seven so I'm hoping I have some evenings but if not hopefully these will be made up uh, when we get back next week now I want some help and advice actually I have this lovely elastic here and I don't remember where I got it from. So waistband elastic, I'd say it's an inch, and but it's furry. Now can you see that? It's very soft and very furry. I don't know where I got that from and I keep trying to look online for soft elastic and I cannot find anything like that. Does anybody know what it's called or where I can possibly get hold of? I love using it for pyjamas because it is so, so soft. I ordered some from Soft, which I thought might be the one from Minerva. It is quite soft and quite smooth, but it's just not this fabric, this elastic here. So, I mean, obviously I'm gonna be using it because it does feel beautiful and soft, but it's not quite right. So if anyone has anything like this and can tell me what it's called or where I can get hold of some, I would be really, really grateful because it's just beautiful for pajamas. Before I round up this video, I have to admit I bought two pieces of fabric this week, even after all that other fabric. But it's not my fault, it is Adam's fault <laughs> from Adam Sews because he messaged me um, saying that on Rainbow Fabrics website, they had some Disney poplin and look at this it's a lovely cotton poplin and it's a navy with Disney and you have to kind of look for the Mickeys there but once you see them you can't see anything else but them but from a distance it kind of looks smart and bubble so um, <laughs> now what I don't know is if I went wrong when I ordered the meterage because I seem to have a lot more than I probably would normally buy. Um, I've got well over three meters here. I don't know what I did. You know, some websites, um, certainly in the UK and abroad, they tend to do by half meters. So if you want one meter, you normally put the thing in as two quantities of two now whether I've slipped up and done that and or ended up with double I don't know but I was very happy to Adam for bringing my attention to that and of course whilst I was on the website I thought there's no point just buying one piece of fabric so I found this lovely viscose um, jersey uh, in this kind of corally color not um, it's just okay on me it's not perfect but it's just okay but it was so pretty I ordered some and again a bit more I would have normally just got a meter and this is way over a meter so I think I went wrong in my quantities box I had two videos out this week two two I'm so sorry you've seen so much from me um so that was a fabric haul and the other one was um talking about the style arc Rafe polo top so I'll put those um, in the description box if you've missed either of those. The video next week will be, and I'm very excited to show you, it is the final fabric wheel of fate. <laughs> I know it's been ages since I uh, did one and I finally got around to making up and I'm very excited to show you. So that will come out next week. So the fabric wheel will be uh, going away for a couple of months because I'd hate you to get bored of it. So, but it will come back, don't worry. We've done a lovely couple of walks. Well, I've done one with my Ramblers group. Uh, we did one and it was only five miles away and we did this lovely walk through uh, Bluebell Wood and we came across remnants of a Norman castle, which I didn't realize was there at all. So that was fantastic. And then at the weekend, my husband and I went uh, kind of five miles in the other direction. We did a lovely walk around a town called Burley. 
it's kind of a little, well, it's a village town. It's in the New Forest. It is very famous for witches for some reason and it does have a kind of feel about it. It's quite a major tourist destination um, but it's just a little village and we did a walk around it so we parked up, walked through the New Forest, through Burley and out the other side. So we saw it from a different perspective that we would do normally just driving through it. Now I don't know if anyone has been to Salem in Massachusetts but when we visited there it did have a kind of feeling about it and that is the same here. I'll put a picture um, at the end of the witch shop they have. They have a couple and one of them I just had to go into out of interest and there's some weird things in there <laughs> I have to say and rows and rows of spell books which I just had to have a look through. It was it's creepy um, but fascinating absolutely so fascinating and obviously it wasn't kind of just a touristy joke with witch hats and broomsticks it was the real deal so yeah I'd love to know a bit more of history about that but it was interesting so we did the walk had some lovely ice creams um yeah I will put some pictures up of course of our just a bit of peace and quiet back to nature back to the UK and the spring is definitely on its way down here thank you very much for joining me I will hope to see you soon in my next video thank you to all my viewers that come back week after week a uh, video after video and chat with me I am so appreciative next month May will be my second year anniversary of YouTube I cannot believe that I, after that first video, I had the courage to keep going. And it's because of all you. So thank you so much. I will see you soon. Have a wonderful weekend. Loads and loads of sewing, I hope. And goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.